Look around. Most people go about their day as if everything would just continue the way as it is now. Partying it up and doing whatever can make them happy. Drowning in addiction. Even in the church, we hear a lot of messages about how to live your best life now. How God's main priority is to make you happy. But friends, things are about to change. The clock is ticking. Our king is on his way. But before that happens, before the Antichrist even rises, many don't speak about the two witnesses who will be given power to testify mightily. Scripture says that the Antichrist will war against them and then after they seemingly are defeated, they will be vindicated and will resurrect for the world to see. Basically, the world as we now see it will change drastically. And there is little preparation for that because there is little communication about these things, even in the church. So now, in this short message today, there is something we need to look at in the scripture about the Antichrist that's important to get before you see the Unmasking the Antichrist documentary that's coming this month. The dark origins of the Antichrist, the place he arises from. We need to explore that. Now, a few days ago, we put out a poll asking where scripture says the beast rises from. Most people said the bottomless pit. Some commented that there is this reference to the beast rising out of the sea and then the second beast rising out of the earth. Very perceptive there. I think the wording could have been better because, yes, scripture does say that there's this first beast that rises out of the sea. And then there will be a second beast that rises out of the earth. Uh, most scholars speak to how the second beast is a reference to the false prophet the first beast generally is a reference to what we see as the Antichrist. And we're going to look at that. Now, does the beast rise out of the sea? Well, in a way, yes. But this is more of a symbolic description of a vision. For instance, we know that when the Antichrist shows up, he's not going to have ten horns on his head. He's not going to have uh, seven heads. He's not going to be a literal beast looking like a leopard. So in these verses here, we have a lot of symbolism. Okay, Even when it speaks of the sea, some refer to how waters often can be used to represent peoples, multitudes. So some say that the sea may be a representation of that. So, yes, in this vision, John was seeing a beast rise out of the sea. But as literal as possible, where does the Antichrist rise from? Well, actually, we can determine that the first beast here who is referred to as the Antichrist. If we can find a parallel passage that shows where he comes from, that will give us our answer. Look down to Revelation 13, 7. So this is still talking about this first beast. And it says that one thing this Antichrist, this beast will do is he will what? Make war on the saints. He's going to try to conquer them. Now, if we can find a parallel passage about the Antichrist rising to what? Make war on the saints and conquer them, then we can get even more context. Is there a parallel passage referring to this beast? Yes. It's in Revelation 11, 7. Here, it speaks about the two witnesses. And again, the two witnesses will prophesy and they will testify. They will be given power and authority from the Holy Spirit for three and a half years. And then what happens? The Antichrist will rise against them and what does it say? Just like in 13.7, the Antichrist will make war on them and conquer them. So you can see the parallel passage, the parallel language here. He will make war on the saints and try to conquer them. Again, it says here in this passage, he will what? Make war on the saints 
and will try to conquer them. And where does it say he arises from? The abyss. Or the bottomless pit. Now, we need to explore uh, the Greek behind this because this is where it gets a little deeper. And uh, we actually talked about that on a recent Patreon video when we were looking at the uh, research process of this documentary. So I'm going to play that so you can see what we explored there. In Revelation 11, when it describes how the two witnesses will be on the scene and after they have what finished their testimony, what happens? The beast, where does he come from? That comes up from the abyss will attack them. The Antichrist will attack them and it clearly says that he comes up from the abyss. Now, when we go to tools here again, comes up out of the abyss. Again, it's abyssals um, translated often as bottomless pit. Uh, the way they uh, interpret this, looking at the context within scripture, is that usually it is referred to as the lowest parts of the earth. Sometimes it's referred to as the common receptacle of the dead especially the abode of demons interesting so it's basically saying that this beast is going to come from the abode of the dead now that's very interesting it's very very interesting um you'll also find that this same greek word is used as the same place that the what well, says here in revelation 7 that uh uh, the beast that you saw was and is not is about to rise from the abominable pit. Rise from the abominable pit. So again, it, in Revelation 17, it says that the beast will arise from the abominable pit. This same Greek word that refers to the bottomless pit or really the lowest region of, of Hades, Sheol, hell, is also used in other uh, places in Scripture. We see that this same word is used here in Luke 8. 31 when Jesus cast out an unclean spirit from a man and the spirits were saying please Jesus don't throw us into the deep now this word deep here is actually the word the same word abyssals so the unclean spirits that would be in people, Jesus had the ability to throw them back into what? The abyss, the um, lowest region of hell. So, it's, so again, it's clear the beast, the Antichrist will rise up from the bottomless pit or the abyss. That's where he comes from. And uh, we have just seen that is a place where you have demonic spirits. They are there and they can be cast there. So there you have it. A realm of hell, you could say. And so I want to play that clip there because this upcoming documentary, um, it's important to understand just a few things but going into it. And one of those things is that literally this Antichrist is going to come from a very dark domain. Um, now, does this just refer to his spirit or also his body? So we have a lot of deep things we're going to be looking at here. A lot of things that many have not yet given thought to. And I will say this about the upcoming documentary, which I believe will be released the last Friday of this month. If it can be released earlier than that, then you will know it will, we're just going to drop it. Otherwise, it will be the last Friday of this month. And I want to say this. Some of you do share our documentaries with your children. There are a lot of them that are very um, good for kids to see, such as the Kingdom of God movie, our Holy Spirit uh, documentaries, right? But this one here is a little darker. So I would say before you, you know, let your kids watch this with you, with you, I would say you need to check it out yourself first and see if they're going to be able to handle it because this is a, it's going to get very dark. There's really no way to avoid that. It, it's going to talk about some things that um, not everyone can be able to handle. Okay. It's coming in a couple of weeks. So God bless you. Thank you for your prayers for the team. We're going to make sure this thing is up to par where God wants it to be. And when it's released, we'll let him do what he does with it. Take care.